All right, we're, well, not quite yet. Maybe we'll start recording, Zach? It shows uh, you recording. It's just, it's still sitting there saying that it's not yet. It's just spinning for me. It's definitely showing out of my end here. Okay. Um, go ahead and mute your mic if you're not speaking, and we'll go ahead and get started. So, welcome to 2020 annual meeting for FamiLab. I know we're a few months late. Uh, there's been a few things that have happened this year that uh, may have adjusted things. So, we'll go ahead and start with, you know, we started the year almost having a war in the country. Uh, we had some fires that burned a continent or so. We had some pandemics. We had lockdown. The lab had a shutdown because of more pandemic stuff. We had we had to go through and we did a lot of PPE manufacturing. Uh, there's riots going on still, and FamiLab still hasn't burned to the ground yet for some reason. Um, so, you know, it's been a it's been a hell of a year. It's been a very big roller coaster of things. You know, good, bad, and different. It's things have just been coming one thing after another it's been kind of a crazy year on things but like i said we're all still here the place hasn't hasn't disappeared hasn't burned down and i just want to say thank you to all of you for all the effort you guys have put in this year and years gone by to to get this place going to keep keep everything happening and just to keep the lab running so uh the format we're going to use for this is we're going to have uh we're going to start with some intros we're going to talk about uh what is the lab and what is the the ideas behind FamiLab, uh, a little bit about our history. We're going to talk about some of the future things that we're talking, we're looking towards, where the lab is going to be going. We're going to talk about some financial information. Uh, we're going to have a, a brief intermission. Uh, we're going to talk about some numbers that might uh, give a little insight into where the lab runs. We'll talk about uh, some proposed changes to the membership process. We're going to talk about uh, member, uh, the Maker Effects cross membership. There'll be discussion about what is ops. We're going to talk about uh, what is the board, and then we'll, we'll do a little bit of board elections. Uh, that's all contingent upon having enough people, which we still do not have. So we'll go ahead and just uh, kick it off with introductions. So first, hello, I am David, your president. Uh, so. Uh, I've been a member of FamiLab for a long time. Uh, I'm trying to remember when I started. I think it was 2013 is when I actually started at the lab. Uh, I've been on the board since the early of uh, early part of 2015, I believe, or, or the end of 2014. I can't remember which. Uh, but I've been around for a while, and I've done what I can for the lab. But I've learned a lot from from all of you in all this process. Uh, next, we're going to talk about. I'll let Lily talk about herself a little bit. So this is Lily. I'm Lily. Uh, I've been part of Lab since I think 2013 as well, about seven years. Um, I am currently the vice president, and the metal shops are. I try to keep everyone from dying, and I build robots. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. Next. Next person is Dan. Dan is our current treasurer. Hey, um, well, I've been part of FamiLab since FamiLab. Um, not always active, but uh, recently have been active um, once again in trying to keep the books and uh, trying to uh, make sure that we stay solvent and uh, upright. And um, so far, that's going fairly well. Uh, we're all here, so well, at least 18 of us or a couple more by now, maybe. Um, but then eh, that's about it. Okay. Uh, next is Michelle, who's our current secretary. Hi. Okay. Yeah. Um, Michelle, um, been member since 2016, right after build out. Sorry. <laughs> that's about it. Okay. Uh, Chris is one of our directors. 
Oh, I am also feeling sideways today. Um, uh, hi, I do mostly uh, bio stuff um, other than the, the, the board, and I've been around since. Um, I think the tour that stuck uh, was right at the very beginning of Build Out. Um, I was introduced to the lab uh, by Ted um, in the previous location, so I didn't get the best idea of what things were really about until my second visit, but then I've just never left since. Okay. Uh, next person is Craig. Is he join us today? Yeah. Oh, I'm totally okay. here. And I snuck Shia LaBeouf in, so that's my greatest achievement. <laughs> um, I'm Craig. I've been a member since 2016, I think. 2017, anyway. And, uh, yeah. There you go. That's me. And Roger had also said that he may not be able to join us due to some family issues. Roger, are you here? I guess not. Uh, Roger's been a member for, I think, since 2018, maybe first part of 2019. Uh, he's not been a member very long, but he's done a lot of stuff to help out, and he's been very active in metal, uh, working in knife making, and doing a lot of the stuff in the uh, forging and casting areas. So uh, he's been doing a good, a good amount of stuff for the lab. So, all right. What is FamiLab? So I'll start by with our, our mission statement. FamiLab is a community that fosters learning, creativity through hands-on projects, collaboration, and the sharing of skills and tools to improve ourselves and enrich the world around us. But what really does that mean? So the biggest thing is community. So we are a community. We try to work together. We try to help each other. We try to teach and we try to share the things that we actually know with the others around us. Uh, FamiLab is, it's a community tool workshop, but it's also, you know, a hangout. It's also a place that we can come and, and hang out with friends to get to know each other, to just generally have a good time and make some really awesome stuff. So FamiLab for me has been a wonderful tool and a wonderful experience that has broadened a mini horizons. I know several people who at the lab who, when started, were working in one job and completely have a different job now because of the things that they learned at the lab. That, you know, Family Lab's ability to share those skills that we didn't know that we wanted to know is, is the most amazing part for me. So, we are a hackerspace, but what is a hackerspace? So you can read the definition, but it's essentially there are different levels of uh, organizations that fall under that. So you have hackerspace on one end and you have Fab Lab on the other. We're, we're, we're more towards the hackerspace, which is less about rules, more about personal responsibility. Uh, we share a lot of common interest among each, among each other. We work together. We often try to uh, work on items, but we always try to keep the rules to a minimum because we don't want to stifle innovation with rules. So, duocracy. What is duocracy? Duocracy is essentially if you want something done, you're very welcome to do it yourself, but realize that it can easily be undone. You know, if you feel that there's something that needs to be done, do it. If you feel that there's something you want to change, you're welcome to do that. Just don't make it a permanent change because somebody might be coming right behind you just to undo that thing because they want to change it back. So you when you're do when you're dealing with duocracy you have to understand that it is a community idea you have to be willing to accept changes from others as well as make changes yourself so from here we're going to talk about history so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and pass this off to michelle and let michelle go ahead and uh start pre presenting and She's gonna give you a, a bit of a history lesson about things and see where we came from and what, what's going on. 
So, okay. Michelle? So, I'm, give me a minute. <laughs> Is it working? Yep. Okay, awesome. All right, so we started out 2009, uh, 800 square feet uh, place. We had about 10 to 15 members. Uh, we had a little to no organization happening. Uh, we had some basic hand tools, we had a server rack, and we had a couch, basically. Moving on, um, 2009, we got our uh, website going and we started our blog post which by the way the first year that we started blog posts we had 22 so we should probably kick it up a bit and so due to some financial concerns we moved to a smaller space 400 square feet and um, by this point we started to get a bit more organized and things really started happening uh, then we sorry I feel like I missed something here but um, and we started to define, you know, have a direction and we created about us, uh, which I believe is current. So FamilyLab is Central Florida's provider of space tools and community for creative technical learning projects. Yep. Let me go back. Cause I missed out on our creating our, um, why it's FamilyLab. So basically, we noticed that we were at, uh, sorry, I lost my clock or whatever word it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. So we noticed that we were at, at the lab, you know, close to like four o'clock. So that's when we came up with the 4 a.m. and then lab. And then that was the little logo on our website. Okay, so like I said, we were starting to do some regular events. We started open house to bring in more people. Uh, we started doing the retro arcade and uh, we started a Kickstarter to get a new laser. And thanks to uh, I3 Detroit, our sister space, they provided some funds, so thank you to them. At this point, we had about 15 to 20 members and hey, we're officially a business and we have our first board. So at that time, the president was Dan Lewis, the vice president was Dan Burroughs, our treasurer was Peter Doge, and our secretary was Matt Cooper. All right, so then in 2011, we started having Arduino classes. So Dave Casey and Matt Cooper had created some slides and they were leading cl classes at CloudSpace conferencing room. Uh, we couldn't hold any classes at the lab because we were too small at that point, but every class was full, was sold out, and people were wanting to keep signing up for them. So that was awesome. And then in early 2013, uh, with the dedication of the board and our members, we were granted our uh, non federal nonprofit, our 501c3, uh, and we got approved on the first submission. So way to go for the board. All right, and then things are moving right along, and uh, Dave Woods came to one of our open houses and approached the membership uh, about moving to a much bigger space, 4,000 square feet. So. 10 times the, uh, that amount. At this point, we had 30 to, four, uh, 30 to 40 members. And move right along. All right, so FamilyLab 3.0, in between this time before build out, things are still happening and we're planning. So we're doing some classes and events. Uh, we did the NASA Space Apps Challenge in New York City. We did the Inter Intertel Annual General Assembly where uh, David Sykes and Jamie went to the conference to speak about hackerspaces. Thank you. Uh, we also did uh, B-Sides events in Orlando, uh, Google I.O., Longwood Night Outs, Boy Scout stuff, and Video Game Nights. All right, continuing on with contests and projects. Uh, we also, I think at this time, we started to put together our 4x4 four four, uh, wood CNC. We were doing some 3D printing, some bioengineering. Uh, we were doing some like art classes and stuff with a laser cutter. And we also participated in the NBC, NBC Hackathon. All right, I will start speaking English soon. So at this point, we're doing lots of stuff and we're getting noticed. So we were in Make Magazine, Ultima Wakaba Magazine, Orlando Business Journal, uh, and Orlando Weekly, Computer World, and lots of others. 
Go family lab. And build out. So we went through lots of iterations on the floor plans and then uh, finally came up with, I believe this is the most current one, what the lab looks like now. And here are some pictures from our build out. This is where we put in our main spaces like our metal shop or wood shop uh, or just the warehouse, the classroom, laptop bar and so forth. And thank you to all those who volunteered so many hours and putting your life on hold to get our lab to where it is right now. Uh, thank you, Dave Woods, for all the work that you put into the lab. And of course, Nation of Makers. So at some point, we get an email asking for, uh, uh, I forgot what we're looking for, um, an invitation uh, asking for information. And then shortly after we did that, then we got an invitation. And so Jamie went to Washington and um, went to the Nation of Makers, which is still going on strong right now. So thank you, Jamie, for uh, for doing that and uh, attending those workshops and help getting uh, makers, uh, maker spaces going. And this is where Chris is going to take over, but I'm right. going to still present. Right. Yes. Hello. Because uh, I'm having technical issues. She's advancing the slides for me. That makes her my savior, not my secretary. Secretary. <laughs> All right. Um, and I get the easiest job because this is just the stuff that's going on recently. OK. Um, so next slide, please. OK. So this is just going to be some of the things that have happened uh, in the, the current space since build out. Um, one of the bigger things is that this big equipment acquisition. Um, was this the Sebring load? Okay. Um, but yeah, so we so it, it made the metal shop um, what it is today, um, with a lot of help uh, from the membership getting things paid for and moved in. So hooray! Um, next slide, please. Okay, so. Um, the Biolab has gone through um, some changes and iterations over the years. So it was started by a very excited Dave Casey, whose involvement with the lab is somewhat limited in, in recent years, unfortunately, and we all miss him dearly. This wouldn't exist without him. Okay. Um, so people that aren't familiar with, uh, with this, we're completely above board. Uh, we are uh, licensed through the State Department of Health. We even have an FBI liaison for certain uh, circumstances, and that is a guy that's on our side. So there have been lots of cool projects over the years. You're looking at some of them. Um, so uh, the two in the lower right are people taking advantage of the aseptic environment that we can work, it with, work in um, to clone orchids. Um, we've engineered E. coli to produce different colors and do art with them for our agar art events and in the upper right we have genetically engineered butts so we are making excellent progress um uh next slide okay so um along with that um there is a uh uh, global network of DIY biology laboratories that hold an annual meeting. Um, and I had the privilege of being invited that uh, on behalf of the Family Lab Biolab this year. So that was extraordinary. I got to meet people from all over the world, including uh, Dorothy, the president of Nature of Makers, Nation of Makers, who's really trying to make an effort to uh, integrate um, the makery and the bio sorts of commu uh, communities, because really cool stuff went on. Like in the lower right, that is a complete uh, DIY um, uh, like bacteria culturing chamber for making uh, legal drugs. Uh, next slide. <laughs> okay, so uh, another big fun project that's been going on with a few of the members that's I think uh, over a year at this point um, is the assembly of a, a, a scanning electron microscope. I think from uh, three 1970s worth of, worth of old microscopes that make uh, at least one microscope worth of good parts that are being assembled. Uh, next slide. Okay, so most of you know what this stuff is, and the next three slides are just fun things to appreciate from previous Maker Fairs. Okay, so that is a big annual event that gets put on here in Orlando by the Maker Effects Foundation. Thank you, Ian. Um, that in a lot of ways is a, a focal point for the year, uh, at least the calendar year for the lab, uh, because there's a big run up for this, and all sorts of fun things go on, uh, like manufacturing uh, the Hot Wheels that you see. Uh, 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 Katie piloting in the upper left here. So, um, uh, so Michelle, could you go the next slides, uh, like click through slow, so people can see cool things that have happened on consecutive maker fairs. Sweet. 
Okay, and um, makeathons happen uh, periodically where we nerds get together and do some fun big project. Um, the most recent one um, was. Would Would you like to say a few words about the fun that you had on this one, Dan? Sure. Uh, this you. was one that was uh, run by uh, that Maker FX put together, and basically we we had a um, uh, we were given a certain fixed budget. Uh, that we could spend at uh, Skycraft. And there were teams from all over that went down there, got a bunch of stuff, and we had to make some sort of game out of it. And we had from, I think it was like Friday evening till like Sunday is when we were showing them off down at the uh, at the um, uh, library, uh, downtown Orlando. And uh, we made a Pong game based on the Pong game uh, in uh, Commander Keen. Uh, I think that was uh, Brian's idea behind it. Um, my biggest contribution to it was seeing a cool little needle voltmeter device at Skycraft and saying we could make a, uh, a score thing out of that. And then handing all of that stuff over to Blackheart and having him make it. <laughs> but it was actually, it was, a, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and I, and I certainly hope Blackheart th thinks so if he, I as well, if he remembers it, because he, I think he stayed up for like, you know, the 36 hours to get it all done. But it was fun. Back to you, Chris. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. And so I'm um, just, so you know, we spend a lot of holidays together, right? So we say community and we actually mean community. Um, so this one is from the 4th of July, just because those are the funnest pictures, but it's not unusual for us to be getting together, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, lonely people on Valentine's Day and that sort of thing. So, you know, thanks. Thanks for being there for me. And I'm still there for you guys. Uh, next slide. Okay, and then just and then just slides of miscellaneous fun stuff that's been manufactured in the the last year. So you know we're seeing wood burning, um, some people's results from the miniature painting classes, um, and uh, most of you know Siraj. Uh, he gives the best hugs, and if you look in the lower left, you can see he also gives the best spankings. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> okay, so. Another really big thing that happened in this last year are the warehouse upgrades. Um, so uh, a lot of pallet racking uh, got donated to us. And um, as a group, we've really gotten together and gotten a lot of uh, storage space put up and things a lot more organized and structured and usable in the workspaces. And they have been in, in a long time. So everybody that's contributed to that, like, thank you so much. That's going to make such a big difference to everybody. And that brings us up to right now so lily right now and the future that's me i'm going to present this slide okay so fam lab 2020 and beyond so 2020 has started as a fairly shite year <clears throat> with COVID happening and all of that. But what we were given the opportunity to do was be part of the maker response to COVID-19. So working with the Maker Effect Foundation um, and a lot of the Florida maker spaces, we took part in a huge drive to produce PPE for medical response. So Coke uh, got one of, Coke coordinated with one of their suppliers to get a, a huge amount of plastic donated that I believe Dave took a big part in uh, figuring out how to use. So we were able to take the very large rolls that uh, we got donated, get them cut down into usable size, and then distribute them all over the state for other maker spaces and maker people to use. Um, so that was a huge boost. Uh, it helped a lot of people in the medical community. It continues to, as co the COVID situation continues, thank you to all of the members that helped with that whole uh, process. Um, and then Michelle had made a slide for the metal shop building and cool stuff, but I 
realized it was all of my crazy robot adventures. So those that don't know, I put on Robot Ruckus at Maker Fair Orlando every year. It is a massive robot event. And due to BattleBots being delayed due to COVID-19, I've had the opportunity presented to me to go to BattleBots in August to compete. So over the next few months, I will be um, building, finishing, designing, building, et cetera, a 250 pound combat robot in the lab. And that will be very interesting to have happen. And that brings us to the future. Um, this, everything I'm about to say is not set in stone. It's not fact uh, because largely Famalab is driven has been and always will be driven by the membership. The membership decides where the organization goes. We as the board, we can help uh, kind of push it certain directions or help uh, facilitate that direction. But ultimately, it's up to the membership. We are membership run, membership funded. It's all about you guys. Uh, we have, we the board have talked in the past uh, about where we would like to see the organization go. Um, what things that we would like to do are things like fostering more outreach, more classes, more general community engagement. Um, and, and we can do some things to help that. Uh, like, for example, the Learn to Solder at Maker Fair Orlando. We can continue to uh, follow that opportunity for not just us to get our name out there, but for us to make a little bit of money in return. Uh, and we, as the board, can continue to do what we can to uh, provide that to happen. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dan with the money uh, and stop presenting. Okay. Um, let's see, let's present that one. And <clears throat> okay, so uh, talking about uh, talking about monies, um, I, I I I have to say I liked uh, Jamie's cat slides, so I have kept them in and made them part of the treasurer tradition. So a little background about accounting: how does it work? Basically, it's witchcraft, science fiction, and some beer. It, you know, at least uh, that's how the Famba Lab accounting seems to work. And in case you don't know, those are actual pictures from a real episode of the Star Trek animated series where Spock draws a pentagram, summons the devil, and has a beer with him. So, um, but don't don't take that to uh, believe that I have no idea what I'm doing. I just have little idea what I'm doing. But the good news is is that we're still around and uh, we're actually not doing too bad, particularly considering the circumstances over last year and this year. Um, the the numbers that I have up here, these are actually for the, uh, the our, our fiscal year, which is the calendar year of 2019. Um, last year, we uh, brought in about $61,000. Uh, as you can see, the vast, vast majority of it, about 90% of it, comes from membership uh, dues. Uh, and then we get, you know, a, a bit, a, uh, an important portion from other things, whether it's class income, uh, Maker Faire, uh, the Amazon Smile, and other donations that we get throughout the year, and of our expenses. And uh, last year, our expenses totaled about 66000 Now, for those of you who are paying attention, which I'd be surprised if many people pay attention to accounting slides, but if you are, you'll notice that that 66000 number is bigger than the 61000 number, which is not very good. But last year was a bit of an unusual uh, year, or, well, I should say it was a planned for year, in that we had uh, the the build out that everybody talked about of going into the 6,000 square foot space, and there was a price tag with that build out and it was paid off, paid back over a number of years. 
a good portion of that of that price tag was actually written off by Dave Woods as a contribution to the lab, and the remainder we had to pay off. And it was on an accelerating schedule, which let us uh, have the benefit of not having to pay so much early on while we were still building up our membership. Uh, and last year is when we hit the highest portion of the loan uh, uh, payments. So. Uh, Fortunately, the uh, prior boards and treasurers knew about this and uh, had made good plans for it. So we had some reserves to help cover that. Um, as you can see, the lease is a uh, a big portion of our of our expenses, the the largest. The good news about this is um, if we were to look at the uh, the same information for any time starting in the second quarter of 2020, that lease number has dropped by a pretty good amount, um, almost $1,000 a month. So that's a, a little less than that. So, but but roughly we can say about 10,000 a year less, uh, which is gonna be, uh, is a huge benefit for us. Um, the, I, I was really hoping to uh, put together a slide that showed uh, how we had saved some money on some of our utilities, but pretty much basically on the electric. We saved a couple thousand this year uh, over what we had spent last year, which is which is fantastic. Uh, and that's due to uh, some better control over the air conditioning and people being just a bit more attentive to when they have uh, different um, with the air conditioning lights and things like that on. So um, I really uh, thank you all for making an effort to save us some money there. That was um, really helpful. Uh, I tried to put together a month by month comparison. And as I went to do that, I remembered that uh, Duke Energy had completely messed up our electrical bills for the, about the first three, four months of 2019. And they weren't billing us for one of our addresses. And then all the bills came in at once. So it really didn't make too much sense looking at it. But for the year, we saved a couple thousand dollars, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, membership. Uh, you know, as they showed on the income slide, membership is where 90% of our money comes from, so it is very important. Uh, we're staying pretty steady uh, over the past few years. We're at a 126 members uh, right now, uh, and that's even counting a few that we've uh, uh, that we've lost recently. Um, you know, it's been a you know, as everybody's well aware, these past couple months have been a, a bit crazy and have been a significant burden on uh, some people. And uh, between that and the lab being shut down, it, it's hurt us a little bit. But uh, honestly, uh, nowhere near as much as I had expected. I am uh, happy to see people still making the effort to support the lab and be part of it, even when we had to go through these uh, crazy circumstances that we, we have been through lately. And uh, just recently, we now that we're kind of coming out of the you know full shutdown of the lab and trying to get back into some sense of normalcy, we uh, are having uh, some interest from new people in the community. So it's um, you know Fama Labs uh, weathering that this storm as well and uh, not doing too bad. Uh, just a little breakdown of. Uh, the membership, um, you know, we have 126 members. Some of that are, uh, some of those members are family members uh, that are, um, the, you know, our, our membership system allows uh, for immediate family members to be a member as well. We count them in the 126 because they are full-fledged members. Uh, so it, it's the, the finances end up being a little bit more complicated than just taking that number and multiplying it by 50 because of, uh, family memberships, special cases, there are some sponsored memberships, um, and some people that uh, are running it uh, or have a special case of a reduced membership. Most of the people that have the um, the reduced membership, there are people that are old family lab people that some of them don't even live in the area anymore. They live on the other side of the country, but they really love family lab and want to uh, throw a bit of money at us and want to remain a member because they feel it's important to them. And, you know, if someone's willing to give us, you know, whatever, you know, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, anything a month and not come over and, you know, touch the lab, um, I don't think any of us have a problem with that and we appreciate it. So 
Uh, here's some more cats. Again, I like the uh, I like Jamie's uh, tradition of putting cats in it, but I have decided to to supplement her pictures of cats with pictures of my own cats. So that is Paul on the right. He he likes laying in medallions on rugs. Um, our recurring expenses: the big blue uh, Pac-Man thing that's gobbling all, everything up, all the money dots up, is the uh, is the rent. Uh, this again, this is from the 2019. So at the time, the average rent for 2019 was about 3,900. As we came into the first quarter of 2020, it was really right about 4,000 as that loan payment increased. But that dropped off. Um, so we're that dropped off in uh, the. Uh, in the second quarter um, and is now down to about 3,000. Um, power is our second biggest, electricity is our second biggest expense a month. And um, then it goes down from there. Um, but so that's why the, the push to save on power uh, was uh, really important and worked out very well. Um, again, uh, another one of my cats. Um, so why is like all of this important looking at these recurring expenses and all of this, because this is where all of your money goes. The money that you pay us, uh, gets all chewed up and spit out in different directions, uh, out of the average rent, uh, uh average payment of $50 a month or the standard payment of $50 a month, I should say about 31 71 of that goes to rent and about $9 and 80 cents goes to utility. And then it goes, uh, down from there. So, um, we have, uh, if anybody is really interested in the details of all of this, we can uh, always provide it. Anybody is welcome to uh, contact me or any time to, uh, if you've got any questions about what is going on with our money. Um, but that's the breakdown of what we do with uh, what you give us. So thank you once again. Um, so this has been a weird couple of years. I, I became treasurer, uh, taking over from Jamie back uh, last year, officially. I'd been kind of starting to help out a bit before that to learn the ropes. Um, and the first year that I was treasurer, we had all the building payments uh, or the, the, the build out, uh, payments to worry about. And, you know, I kept seeing the, these dwindling reserves as we were paying down on them. And then we got into like the first quarter of 2020 and, you know, I was all excited because we got our rent reduced and everything was going to be great. And then we all know what happened at that point. Um, you know, 2019, like I say, the challenges were the, those in, uh, increasing, uh, loan payments, 2020, the way it went from my point of view was January. We had, that was our third from last loan payment. I was excited. February is the second from last. It's even better on March 1st. We had our final loan payment. It was at that point, it was like, yay, nothing could possibly go wrong. And then, you know, sometime, I, I don't remember the exact day, but sometime around March 2nd is when, um, you know, COVID, oh my God, we've got to shut down the lab. Um, but we, we are getting through that now and a big help to that have, has been, uh, Dave Woods, our landlord, um, you know, in addition to all the help he's given us along, along the way, uh, in, in May as a, uh, he, uh, wrote off our rent as a contribution to our PPE making effort. Uh, so he saw what was going on here. The lab was shut down. The only thing it was being used for was making um, protective equipment uh, for people in the uh, medical field. And um, he thought that that was a good use of uh, Famalab and a good use of a contribution to our rent. So that is just awesome. And uh, June, things are things are looking better now. We're kind of getting back a little bit more to normal. You know, I know there's some people out there that are been hit really hard with uh, what's going on. Uh, and hopefully um, we'll be, you know, just as a, you know, as a community bigger than family lab and as a nation, we'll be getting out of this eventually. Um, but um, it, it, there were, there were some, I have to admit, there were some times that I was uh, pretty stressed over this uh, last year and, and recently with uh, what was going to happen at Family Lab. And I think other people on the, on the board felt the same way, but uh, it's starting to feel, um, you know, much better and much more positive now. So my uh, final picture of one of my cats added in uh, and any questions that anybody has? If I'll not, raise, sorry, go ahead. 
I'll raise one one item. So, yes, sir. Uh, I went to I was at the Nation of Makers conference. It was all virtual this year, and in talking with a bunch of different maker spaces, the average has been between uh, ten and thirty percent of membership dropped in most of the maker spaces across the country. Um, we are still well below that ten percent mark, which I'm quite surprised by and very happy by. So. Yeah, a absolutely. Uh, it was, you know, I think that's more what I had in mind that I was expecting to see. Um, and I'm thrilled that um, we've been nowhere near that. So, um, you know, I think that's a combination of, uh, hopefully it's a combination of some of our people weren't hit as hard as they could have been. And beyond that, I think we've got some people that are really, really dedicated to making sure FamLab stays around and they recognize it's an important part of their life and an important part of the community. So that is it for me. I believe the next speaker is intermission. I, I actually have a, a question, Dan. Oh, yes. Uh, given that we were paying, you know, quite a bit of quite a bit per month for um, paying back the loan, is there a a, a like a long term plan for that remainder cash uh, as we move forward? Well, there's a um, the the amount of uh, the amount of extra that we have now is it's not all that huge per month because we were we were running a deficit per month and we were running a deficit of somewhere it, it, you know it varies with the electricity usage and all of that but at one point it was running around six to seven hundred a month uh, so that uh, that reduction of rent uh, has turned a negative six to seven hundred into a positive um, you know say 350 or so um, uh, per month, the immediate uh, the immediate plan for it was to uh, build the reserves up a bit more, just to get us to a place where, if some you know big disaster hit, we could we would have a little bit of reserves to uh, to weather it. And when I say big disaster, I mean a big disaster could be like we have to replace the air conditioning system or something like that. Um, there should never be a big disaster. There's no right. disasters happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we, we can we put that in the bylaws? <laughs> um, so, with that said, you know, all of a sudden we had the COVID thing. So, um, we kind of getting ready a little bit more, like we feel a little bit more relaxed with monies. Uh, to we went back into the. Um, you know, the more of the prepper type uh, mentality. So uh, on, honestly, Mike, it's a really good question. And we probably should put some effort into, uh, we will be putting some effort into figuring that out and, and welcome uh, suggestions from everybody involved with FamilyLab. To be honest, right now, uh, with everything that's gone on, we've kind of gone back into not quite panic mode, but um, worry mode a bit and just wanting to build up a little bit of uh, uh, build up the reserves a, a, a bit. Um, yeah, so I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. Thank you. Sure. Austerity is not a bad thing. Right. I just want to toss in uh, to thank you for doing a kick ass job, Dan, because treasure is a thankless job. Um, <laughs> You're doing great. The lab's still open. Whole board's doing great. Keep it up. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Okay, then. All right. Well, originally we had planned for intermission, but we hadn't done an annual meeting via virtual before. And so we don't know, we didn't know how long things were going to take. Uh, we're only about 45 minutes in, so I will, if anybody wants, if you want to do the animation, we can, or we can just move on. Anybody have move any on. issues with moving on? Move on. Do, do we want to try to get, like, I think- I think like, John Cope has a question. I see him gesturing. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Maybe he wasn't gesturing at us. 
<laughs> I think we need, only need three more people to vote, by the way. Well. Is there a reason why we never pinged everyone in Slack at the start of the meeting? I mean, we kind of did. Um, because we've pinged them repeatedly over the last three months? Six months? So why stop? It's kind of an important thing. Honestly, well, it... actually, actually, with the with the people that are in the chat, I mean, if we're at twenty eight, are there people that have a family member who is a member of Family Laugh with them? <laughs> well, that that's where I'm counting. That I already counted that. I think that's why okay. two or three. So we we're at. We're at 27 because there's one member who, or one non member who's a part of this right now. So. Oh, okay. And then. So, it, here. One, one, thing that I'll, one thing that I'll say is at this point, it's kind the vote is going to be kind of irrelevant because there's four positions to be voted on and there's four people who are running for those positions. So. Like I, I agree that we should be voting on it, but at the same time, it, it it's kind of irrelevant. But okay. All right. So, um, Alex uh, asked a question about prospective members voting capable. Uh, no. Uh, only members who are actually current full members. All right, so um, we'll skip the intermission. So welcome back, everybody. Um, so we're going to do a, a bit of fun with numbers, so some, some insight information, some uh, looking at a few of the numbers that have, have changed along with FamiLab. So first off, so we've got Slack stuff. Uh, this was last year's numbers. So last year we had sent 1.1 million messages since we started using Slack. And we'd uploaded 34,000 files. Jamie was at the top of the list on the number of messages sent with 34 or 36, 136,000 messages. Uh, Nick was God. slowly behind at 93,000. Uh, we got uh, John Cope and then Mike King and then Dan Lewis. Which Dan Lewis is mostly in in private chat. He doesn't show up too much in the in the public channels, or maybe four a.m. Um, so the uh, points system over there on the on the uh, the left hand side, which is uh, the points is awarded via Famabot. Uh, those were last year's points. We reset them after the annual meeting last year, so they're going to be a little different. Uh, also, whenever we use the uh, at channel or at everyone, we were getting. Uh, uh, about 690 people in 11 time zones. Let's see how things have changed. So this year we were getting 818 in 13 time zones. We added a couple time zones to the deal. Uh, a few extra people. Uh, we're now at 1.3 million uh, messages in Slack, 40,000 files. Uh, the point system on the on the side of there, we've got you know Blackheart leading everybody with 102, and then. Uh, Kyle second with uh, 63, Lily with 60. Um, Jamie is still in the lead with 160,000 messages. I am eternal. <laughs> and honestly, nothing has changed in the top five except for a couple of positions. Dan Lewis has moved up and Mike King has moved down. <laughs> uh, so next item is Amazon Smile. They've given us uh, three thousand eight hundred ninety-one dollars since we started using it. Um, so we signed up. Uh, I don't. Know, I don't remember how many years ago that was. Like 2014, 2015, Jamie. I believe. Fifteen. Well, maybe? in that time, if you uh, Amazon has given us money, it doesn't cost you anything. So if you are not already using it, please install the Smile Always plugin for Chrome or just shop through. Smile.amazon.com. We are listed as Orlando Hackerspaces, not Famalab. So, 
Another way you can donate is through Humble Bundle. So if you are a gamer, you like to get stuff, you can uh, list Orlando Hackerspaces as the charity that you support and be able to have us get a little bit of money from the things that you purchase anyway. Uh, next item on the list is folding at home. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this, but uh, folding at home has been around for a number of years. It's a distributed computing platform, so you can donate clock cycles from your computer when you're not using it. Uh, so in uh, a few, about two months ago, we started using, uh, we set up a team for that. Uh, Nick is the one who actually set the team up, so thank you, Nick. Uh, and about 20, I think 22 of us have been uh, uh, donating uh, clock time. And so we've been processing stuff for them to uh, model various forms of the COVID virus and try and figure out processes and ways of doing uh, vaccines and cures and just general understanding of the way the virus works. Uh, so we've moved from uh, 254,000 as the team rank down to just over a thousand. So there's only about a thousand teams that have actually made, have done more processing than we have. So thank you all who've donated time and that's pretty amazing, I think. So if you are interested, you can go to Folding at Home and actually download the app and run it on your machine. It doesn't take up a whole lot and it just runs in the background. Uh, so we're going to move from here into uh, the membership process changes. So uh, there's been a, a document that's been available for, uh, well, it was been available since pretty much the beginning of the year, and then it stayed open for months longer because we didn't actually have our annual meeting. Uh, but we closed it not too long ago, and the major takeaways from the whole thing are uh, we're going to get rid of the testimonials because they weren't really working that well because most of the responses we got were not three raccoons in a trench coat or did not kill anybody in my in my visual area. Doesn't tell us a whole lot about the person, doesn't give us a whole lot of information. Uh, we're going to try and replace that with a kind of an informal interview with a board member or kind of a talk, with just, a, just to let at least somebody have a talk with them and get to know them a little bit and maybe help shepherd them through that process of becoming a member, but also gives, gives a bit of a... a coordination with the, the new member to, to see how the, how we can help them and how they can help each other. Um, along with this, so there's been a form that's been available for a while, so if you're interested in, uh, uh, if you're uh, having a problem or if there's, a, if there's something that needs to be, uh, the board needs to be informed of, there is a, a Google form that's penned in General Meta that you can send an anonymous message or you can send a message to the board directly uh, if there's a problem with a, with a perspective or if there's something going on, let the board know. We'll see what we can do to deal with it as best we can. Uh, we are also discussing with uh, MakerFX. Uh, we're looking into doing some cross membership with MakerFX. Uh, we have not finalized anything yet. We're still in, in talks with them. Uh, both sides seem to be very receptive to setting up a, a bit of a cross membership so that we can, uh, all of our members would get discount rates there, their members would get discount rates here. We don't know what the numbers would be at this point, but they would be able to provide us with some knowledge and people and we'd be able to provide them with some knowledge and people. So it helps out both sides. They have tools that we don't have, we have tools that they don't have. But details will be forthcoming. Once things get hammered out, that'll all be dealt with by the new board of directors. So we have operations. So the operations, uh, we're gonna let uh, one of our members of ops deal with that, and that's gonna be Blackheart. Are you on here, Blackheart? Muted? Mm, hardware muted. I saw him bounce. Off and come back. Maybe something got. Yeah, I was saying. No problem. Something got screwed he, up. With that. He's trying. He's trying. Testing. Testing. There you go. Oh, yeah. Hey, I just had to switch mics three times. That sure. <laughs> uh, yay, Google. Um, is somebody else controlling the slides, or do I have to take that over? I can do it. Okay. Then. Cool. So ops team stuff. So FamLab being a 
hacker space duocracy kind of thing the lab is only as good as you make it um and the ops team is kind of like the most dedicated people volunteering to make sure that it still stays as good as we can make it um so it's just regular members volunteering to help with the daily day-to-day -day upkeep of the lab making sure the lab policies are being handled and things are being taken care of making sure the lab doesn't burn down when nobody's watching and actually when people are watching too it shouldn't burn ideally um if it does, we make sure there's a camera running so we can get revenue on YouTube afterwards to rebuild, right? I don't think that's how AdSense works, <laughs> unfortunately. But yeah, that's 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 what it's just regular members volunteering. Um, so general stuff the ops handles is helping to schedule events and things. So helping with um, adding it to the calendar, adding it to Eventbrite, um, making sure that you know there's events on the calendar, which right now is a little bit more difficult, but you know, in normal times. Um, general outreach stuff, reaching out to potential new members, trying to find opportunities for us to, to have events and things to help teach and, and be part of the community. Um, maintaining lab supplies, which is like acquiring consumables, making runs to like Costco and stuff for paper towels and general cleanup PP stuff around the lab, um, toilet paper, that kind of stuff. Um, handling social media, a, again, goes kind of with event scheduling and outreach, just making sure that we have a presence online so people can find us and then become parts of the lab. Um, uh, handling the website wiki and then managing any upkeep and repairs on lab equipment. So if anything's broken, like um, we've done a few um, like realignments and things to make sure that the laser is still running, um, stuff along those lines, just, just keeping the lab ticking along. Um, if there's anything urgent that you need um, because you need something urgently from the lab um, at ops team on Slack, or if it's not, you know, immediately pressing, then at ops at mlab.org as an email to reach out to, um, and that the Siraj asking for hugs was already there. Um, hugs, Chan is great for just niceness, but also social distance in real life. Thanks. Um, yeah, so if if you want to help out, if if you're actively part of the lab and, and you're somebody who's willing to um, help bring stuff, get things, if you have a Costco membership and can help bring in you know, paper towels and stuff, awesome. I'm um, reaching out to lab ops and management on Slack to join the team would be great. Yay. And, and logo. <laughs> and that's the end of the ops stuff. Thank you, Blackheart. Yay. Uh, Craig, do you want to do uh, board stuff or you want me to continue on? Um, no, you go ahead. <laughs> All right, so board of directors. So what is it that the board of directors does? Well, we're a business. So we're the ones who actually keep the business running. We deal with uh, all the paperwork. We work on making sure that things are paid. We make sure that all of our legal documents have been filed, that all of our uh, all of our ducks are in a row, that we, we've planned out and we tried to take care of and, and deal with issues that have come up and more on the grander scale. So we're trying to plan years in advance as much as we can. We're trying to make sure that we're going to be solvent in the future. So everything from finances to dealing with uh, interviews to dealing with media to uh, making sure that personal information doesn't get out. We try to, we are, we pretty much are the ones who do the things to keep the lab running. The ops deals with day-to-day -day stuff. We're the things that, we're the ones who deal with the the week to month to month kind of stuff. We deal with taxes, we deal with all the things that nobody wants to deal with. We do paperwork so you don't have to. Um, so if you need to contact the board for any particular reason, uh, you can either email board at, which goes to all the board members. You can also use the issue reporting form, which is the same one that I talked about previously. Uh, it is penned in uh, general meta. It's also penned in, I think, lab ops and man management. Um, but the, the uh, reporting form will be able to let you either anonymously or non-anonymously send us messages so that we can deal with those issues, whatever they are. Uh, if there's anything that's treasury related, please email the treasurer at famolab.org. Do not send a message. Do not send a message to Dan. Don't send a message to, you know, don't send a message to me. Don't send a message to anybody else. 
send an email because it gets lost. Slack moves very fast sometimes. If you actually want it to be taken care of, this is how that happens. So please email treasurer if you have anything related to treasury or payments or dues or anything money related. So joining the board. If you're interested in joining the board and it sounds like a great thing, um, then you should have been paying attention in Slack and, and said, hey, I want to join the board You know, six months ago. Um, so you plan for next year. So uh, board member elections. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let the people who are interested in being a part of the board, there are four spots that are open. Uh, currently, there are four people who are running for those slots. Uh, the people on the list are uh, Blackheart, Lily, Dan, Roger. Uh, my spot, which is one of the ones that's up for re-election, I am not, I'm not allowed to run again because of some bylaws changes that happened a few years ago. So I am not eligible to be on the board again. So I'm going to go ahead and start by turning this, this year. over. This year, correct. I'll go ahead and turn this over to Blackheart, and he can talk about his slide. Hi, many thanks. Um, so I think most of the people who are in actually in the virtual meeting actually know who I am, but I've been with the lab now for going on three years. Um, ran onto it in the, um, I think it was in the Orlando subreddit. Somebody had posted up like a really cool laser cut acrylic sign thing. I was like, where do you make stuff like this? And then it turns out that the lab's 10 minutes from where I live. <laughs> um, and so yeah, my background is in um, film VFX stuff, and I was kind of looking at getting into 3D printing and like trying to transition that into physical things anyway, because Adam Savage was a huge inspiration. And then there was an entire building full of smart people and tools right on my doorstep, and I have been like bitten by the maker bug since. So um, if if it still happens, this would be my third year, um, third Maker Fair running, having joined the lab now. But yeah, uh, since joining, was trying, been trying to make sure I'm at every meeting. Um, there's been a running joke for a while that you know I have to go last if there's any show and tell stuff because I always have a million things that I've made. Um, I've helped around the lab doing things like running the the how to solder class, laser 101, a couple times. Um, was doing some virtual classes for Fusion and Blender. Um, was helping Chris with the mini painting nights. You know, getting making lab stuff, um, helping out with ops. Uh, I ended up getting appointed as the POC of the Fab Lab and making sure that like, the Delta and the laser were being handled. Um, and as far as like stuff that can help out with the board, um, obviously background in film photography and VFX work, so I can help with like marketing, social media outreach kind of stuff. Um, and I have some background with like 501c3 board stuff because I helped found the uh, Orlando Filmmakers Coalition, which is a, a separate nonprofit de dedicated to networking, education, and outreach for the local Orlando film community. So that's me. Does anybody have any questions? Good. Yes, Mike. I have to ask a question. Uh, oh, what would be your, uh, what would be something that you would do on the board that you can't do as a member, and what makes you want to uh, submit yourself to such pain and suffering as being on the board can entail? Uh, paperwork. <laughs> Uh, mostly just trying to give back to the lab as many ways as I can. Um, just awesome place, lots of awesome tools, lots of awesome people, just trying to help out as many ways as I can. Um, basically, the board can fit me in wherever it feels good. That came out sounding weird. <laughs> However best I can help. Um, I guess, yeah, for the most part, it's stuff I could probably do as an ops member and, and that kind of thing. Just whatever extra decisions and guidance I can help provide. Cool, thank you. Are there any additional questions? <laughs> How much pain and suffering are you ready for? Uh... Depends on the day of the week. Um, plenty. 
I've I've been through infighting on a board before, and and half of them left for California. That was great. Um, I yeah, introvert, yeah. but also a masochist. I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if there's no more questions, we can move on to the next. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Dan. Hey, um, so uh, here I am uh, running once again for the uh, for the board. Um, you know, I've uh, been the treasurer for the past year. Um, I'm a one of the founding members of uh, Famalab. Um, you know, I don't know what to, I, I. You know, I don't know. It's kind of a little bit odd because since it's you know four people running for four slots, there's not much you have to do to really sell yourself. But um, you know what I would what I would say is that um, honestly, oh, whoops, sorry, that was an unplanned cat. Um, it, you know, it, for for me, honestly, it, it doesn't really it wouldn't really matter if I was on the board, not on the board. I don't really care. I love Famalab. I love what it's about. I think. The, uh, the you know the people here are great. It's a just a, a, an amazing thing, and I just want to make sure that it continues to exist and prosper, and that there are new interesting people there uh, as much as possible, whether that's being part of the board or not being part of the board. So um, you know, there you go. I don't really have much more to say than that. So I'm happy to answer any questions um, you guys have. What are you planning on doing on the board that you can't do currently? Well, being that I am currently on the board, there isn't much that I can't currently do. <laughs> Have you started planning and fantasizing for what comes after board? <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, in a, well, maybe not as odd as that could sound way, yes. Um, one of the things, uh, and I probably need to have a look at this because it hasn't been updated in a while, um, that I that I started doing over this last year was um, there was a lot of the knowledge about the treasurer that was uh, had been captured in what Jamie passed on to me in our various chats and uh, through Slack. Uh, that I compiled into a basically a treasurer's how-to manual because at some point uh, you know in the future I'm not going to be treasurer and I'm not going to be on the board just because those are family lab rules and someone else is going to have to worry about that and I wanted to make sure that um, whether it was the case through through time you know getting voted out of uh, timing out or just whatever uh, that it was a as easy process as possible for someone else to take over. So in that case, yeah, I kind of have planned out a bit and we hopefully have a good little manual to hand off to somebody else so they can take care of all this crap. <laughs> uh, any other questions for Dan? I'm curious what that is in your photo on your head. <laughs> oh, um, so I <laughs> have a friend of mine who uh, is a, uh, a a psychologist, or, and uh, he worked with this group that was doing this study where they were doing like the like the whatever the EEG and mapping brain activity when uh, people were exposed to different stimulus, and he needed a whole bunch of volunteers to come in and do that. So that is a little or that's a EEG um, brainwave monitoring. Uh, cap that all of those little white dots have a little hole in the center that they would squirt like conductive gel into uh, that really leaves it, it well in the in the rare places that they touched hair on my head uh, it left a big mess and it was kind of a overall nasty experience but I just like the uh, look of it <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah. uh, anybody else Okay. Oh, thank uh, we'll you. Move, we'll move on to the next one. So, Roger, uh, are you here? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Everything's working then. <laughs> yes. Hey, I'm uh, Roger Flug. I'm a fairly new uh, member to Family Lab, about a year, year and a half. 
uh, I was asked to join the board on an interim basis last year, which I uh, uh, quickly accepted. Uh, my professional background originally is electrical engineering. However, uh, all my professional life, I've been uh, involved in uh, sales and business uh, development and business management. And um, I show up to all the meetings, or at least I try to. <laughs> Any questions for me? No questions. Uh, I'll I guess, everyone, I'll I guess everyone knows to, me. Uh, to some information. So uh, when a when there is an opening on the board, uh, the existing board will appoint somebody, and that person has uh, cannot remain on the board for more than the, till the next annual meeting. So they have to be reelected if they wish to stay. So, so yeah, I was and I was asked to join. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions for Roger? Everyone knows me already. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and move on to Lily. I'm Lily. Uh, and just a quick note, Roger took over from Luby, who had to move because he got an insane job offer up in Pittsburgh. Uh, rat brain surgery, I think. Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Pitts, um, Philadelphia. Yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah, he's doing rat brain surgery. But I'm Lily. Uh, I gave my introduction earlier. Uh, I've been on the board for two years. I'm the currently the vice president. Um, we, it, if slash when reelected, we we will decide amongst the board what the new positions will be. Um, the things I've done for the board is I've kind of tried to change some of the attitude. Uh, it's not all rain and brim brimstone, like everyone says. I think that this current board and the board before it has done a lot to stabilize Famalab uh, from the obviously understandable tumultuous build out. That's hard for any hacker space. Um, and what I want to do in the future is use my professional knowledge of bookkeeping to kind of sort our books a little better working with Dan. Any questions? Will you deliver great honor to the lab at BattleBots? <laughs> I always deliver honor. Uh, Family Lab will not be Sorry, go ahead. technically sponsoring the BattleBot, but will be sponsoring the same way Baltimore Hackerspace sponsors Mammoth in that I will be building it out of Famalab, which is worth a shit ton of money. Yay. So I have, have a two questions, epic, Lily. Epic viewing party. Yes, yes. Mike. Yes. Uh, good, Mike. Uh, so uh, two questions. You said you were you know, very interested in... Um, uh, bookkeeping and such is—is is it the plan for you to um, take on the role of treasurer uh, from Dan at this year if uh, reelected? It is not, um, <clears throat> and it's not really an interest in bookkeeping. It's just a professional skill I've learned I've had, <laughs> and I'm very good at. Um, and it's the plan is for Dan to continue as treasurer because that role takes such a transitionary period. I'm just going to be working with him to smooth out like our QuickBooks um, and some of the methodologies therein, to helping him make his job easier. Okay, I'm sure the help will be appreciated for sure. Absolutely. Uh, the the other thing is, can we put a Famalab sticker on the bottom of your robot so that when it gets flipped over, uh, it'll show <laughs> up on TV? Yeah, and I'm going to take a FamLab banner to California so I can hang it oh, in nice. my pit space. There you go. That's take awesome. one of the new logo ones for sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, and last question. Um, have you I ever have so done questions? Any... But because, because I love you. <laughs> yes. Ha have you, uh, what is the shadiest deal that you've done recently while talking through a fence at an industrial complex? Have you ever asked for... Uh, Illicit substances or materials? No, I was given some batteries, though. 
Oh, okay, good. So for, for background on that, <laughs> um, Mike's work and my work are in complexes next to each other and there's a fence separating us. And I hadn't gone out for a smoke break and Mike just happened to be doing a fresh air lap of his building. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you want some batteries? <laughs> Soda drugs. Any serious For questions? External use only. I'm sorry, Lily. I did have one serious question. You did have a serious question, and I appreciate it. Any serious questions? What do you plan on doing that you can't do on the board now? Fix the books. <laughs> <laughs> and not like a rig the books kind of fix the books. <laughs> a... a smooth out the bookkeeping process for Dan Burroughs and future treasurers and implement best practices from a professional point of view of a real business. Not that we're not a real business, but we're not a real business. Okay. Um, thank you, Lily. Thank you. So, um, how voting works. So we're uh, I, I can take doing, uh, we're going to be doing online voting. I'm going to let uh, Craig go over this, uh, but essentially, it's going to be online voting. It's going to be anonymous, and you should all have received a link. So Craig, go ahead and sweet. Yeah. So uh, wall of text, death by PowerPoint. Enjoy. Um, everybody should have gotten an email, like Dave said. Uh, it's a unique email. It's your voting link. Don't give it to anyone. Unless you want to give that out as a proxy, in which case you can. Uh, if you pass that link on, then someone else can vote on your behalf. Uh, that's allowed for in our uh, bylaws, and so it's also allowed for in this election. Um, we're using the STV system, which is basically what's laid out in the uh, bylaws. If you want to have a look, go ahead. But I kind of want to avoid confusion, and there's a really nice explanation from it in Election Buddy, so I'd encourage you to read their link, uh, which you should see as a link in the ballot itself if you, if you, when you get it by email. Uh, this election will close June 30th, Tuesday at 9 p.m., and then the board will make a, a, an announcement that should shock everyone because, as we've said before, we have four positions and four candidates. Um, so if you manage not to get elected, I'll be very impressed. Um, if we could get everyone to please check their emails, get their ballots in, uh, we need a quorum in order to, you know, have that vote be valid. So we need a, a percentage of the votes to come back. Um, and we've got some time to do that, so that should be okay. And then, uh, as well, and I, I miss getting it into the Slack uh, or into the slide in time, but there's a Slack channel. It's called Vote 2020. If you uh, do not receive a ballot and you believe you should, uh, or if there is a problem, or you need assistance, or you would like to clarify something, please do so in that channel. Um, and we will do our best to make sure that uh, everybody gets a vote uh, according to the current membership list. Uh, I think there was a question earlier, provisional members are not uh, qualified to vote, so it's only current uh, full status members. Uh, that should have got an email. And so, yeah, um, I, I guess we could do a, a quick pause for questions because we are way ahead of schedule, which is- For anyone watching the recording, just to clarify, that email would be the one that's linked to what you're paying with? Yes? It is, yeah. So it, 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 would, it would be whatever we have currently in that system. Uh, and it, it's possible that it's incorrect. Um, if it's not correct, then we'd love to know and help you out with that. Um, so yeah, uh, and if you uh, are aware of anybody who uh, may not know or may not have got the email, please uh, you know get them to contact us. Uh, again, through Slack is probably best. There's also an email address, vote at uh, but Slack is probably best. Any other questions? Uh, I will mention one more item. Uh, the way that it's described in the bylaws, it's from uh, zero to n minus one. So if there's four people, it'd be zero to three. But in the uh, in the voting, it's actually listed as one to four. So it adjust accordingly. Yeah, follow follow the election buddy rules. I wasn't I wasn't gonna, you know, yeah. people 
get confused, so I was just going to leave it with the ballot that you get. So, yep, that's fine. Yep. Cool. Um, just a reminder, as it was mentioned previously, uh, you're voting for board, not for any particular position. All positions are decided internally by the board after uh, after the annual meeting and when they have the first board meeting post this post annual meeting. Uh, they will uh, sit down and decide who gets what position based off of existing skills and who's willing to do what. So, uh, any other questions about voting? Okay. Get your votes in. Get your votes in. Uh, once again, closes on Tuesday. Uh, we must have a quorum or the vote doesn't count. We need at least 32 people to vote. Uh, open discussion. Is there anything anybody wants to talk about? Anything that needs to be uh, on camera, on on record that we want to discuss or put out there? Thank you, Dave, for all your years of service. You're very welcome. Yeah, one hundred percent. Thank you. Next time we're all in person, we'll put an out of order sticker on you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I I concur. It'll have to wait till like. We don't have to be you know, six feet away to try to put the sticker on you, though. So next annual meeting. Well, just, just grab a 2032. Yeah. Use a broomstick. Annual meeting 2025. You Don't worry. You can put a sticker on me with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> oh, can I, I'm only a six-foot Can I pole. use a drone? <laughs> we can talk to Dan about that. Dan, can we borrow a $50,000 drone to put a sticker on somebody? <laughs> oh, maybe. Uh, I'll get the stickers. That would be so family lab. That is perfectly family. <laughs> uh, is there anything else for open discussion? When are the cheese grits? <laughs> Lily, can you get us cheese grits? <laughs> no. <laughs> Where's the after party? Can't. I hate the catering here. The after party is where you're at, so uh, it's BYO. Uh, make sure that you uh, you know, take care of your 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 food situation because uh, there's all the food that you can eat that's in your fridge. Yes, we also have an after party on tabletop gaming. Ah, all right. So if you weren't aware of that, join the tabletop yeah. gaming channel. Get the details for how to join the 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 party and. Uh... Hooray! <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, then I'm going to go ahead and say that we're pretty much going to wrap this up and call it the end, but I'll uh, give a couple, couple of closing remarks. Um, I've been on the board for a while. Uh, I think that Mike is the only person who's been on the board longer than I have, actually. Uh, I've been extended twice now because my because I came on shortly after Jamie did, and we changed the schedule from uh, the end of the year to the beginning of the year. So that added six months, and then we've added a couple more months now, and like it's just been weird arrangements of things for a number of years. Uh, I've been on the board for a while. I have appreciated the the ability to kind of shape and and help the lab as best I can. Uh, I, I want to thank all the previous boards: Jamie, Mike, Willa, uh, Cope, uh, Chateau, Dan. Van Lewis, if he's here, I don't, I don't, there's so many people that I'll forget all of them. You guys have done a wonderful job over the many years to to keep us going, to keep us solvent, to keep the lab running. And I just want to say thank you to all of you. I want to thank you all, all the members, because without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Without you guys, I wouldn't want to be here, because it's community. It's all about people. For me, I started coming to the lab because of the people. It wasn't about the tools. It was the people. And... You guys make it worth worth my time, worth my effort, worth the energy that I put into it. And I want to just express how awesome I think all of you are. So you're awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for all everybody. Your time. Thank you for for keeping the space going. And I hope that we continue on for another eleven years because we have now passed the eleven year mark. So thank you guys. Yeah.
Luke. Thank you, Dave. Now get out. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, uh... <laughs> well, Where's the rage quit? It's too late. It's right here. I can click it. It's, it's, it's Where's your mic? You need to drop it. So I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> stop first. recording, and then we can, you guys can continue on in this space, but we'll go ahead and stop the recording.